tax rates from 70%, and I'll, I'll grant you that you raise revenue, but cutting tax rates from 30%, I mean, the Lapper curve says at each end of the curve, you get zero taxes. Right. But somewhere in there, raising taxes will raise revenue, and lowering taxes will lower revenue. Right. Um, somewhere in there, and I guess the, the, the question that we, that we uh, have to face is just where that, that point is. So it's not really a philosophical difference. It's a question of trying to understand what the point is where you really are maximizing revenue. You have these two French economists who have made a big splash saying that you could tax people 70%, no exemptions, no loopholes, and it would have no effect on productivity. I don't know any of you who really would operate on that premise in your uh, everyday life. I don't know if you would. Um, would you accept a 70% tax rate? No, the 39 and a half wouldn't kill you either. Maybe, but um, I mean, I don't have the data right in front of me, so in a way this may be a kind of a feckless debate to have here. Um, but if you actually look at periods of revenue collection, you find that um, the Bush period was a period of very high revenue collection. Now, then you have to have an argument about what exactly happened in two, 2007 and 2008. And to defend the good name of the Wall Street Journal, I would like to point out that in 2002, we ran an editorial titled Fannie Mae Enron. Okay? Unfortunately, Pulitzer Prizes can't be won for being more than five years ahead of the curve in, in, in pointing out that what Fannie Mae had serious problems in its accounting and that a government-sponsored enterprise pouring money uh, that appeared to be absolutely safe into the real estate market was a disaster in uh, the making. We were warning about a real estate bubble publicly in 2005. Um, so, you know, what you had in 2007, 2008, people say, oh, it was on account of Wall Street greed, blah, blah, blah. No, it was on account of cheap money and politically directed credit at a housing market that overinflated and burst. Classic bubble scenario, I'll point to uh, a, lot of other, uh, a lot of other cases. Um, so, there is a kind of a long record that points to the fact that lower tax rates tend to spur private enterprise, leading to economic growth from which governments derive greater revenue. I'm not against maximizing government revenue, or optimizing, I should say, government re uh, uh, revenue, but it's, um, it's self-defeating to try to raise taxes, um, inhibit uh, economic growth, and then wonder where you're coming from. By the way, you know, um, it's not an accident that Britain finally realized that a 50% top marginal rate uh, was bringing in, uh, was, was actually a revenue killer, which is why they dropped it now to 45% in their last uh, budget. You know, governments are understanding that you just can't raise taxes forever and expect economic, you know, a, an, to have an economy to tax. Just one other point that I want to make. You just had this election in France. The president of France, the current president, he became president today, Francois Hollande, wants to tax millionaires 70% for, of their income above a million euros. You know what's going to happen? London is going to become, or the nicer parts of London are going to become French-speaking enclaves. So don't, and now you just saw the Facebook guy who just went, parked his money in Singapore. There is a growing incidence of, of very wealthy people, people who are abandoning their American citizenship. Be careful about raising taxes and driving people to uh, uh, overseas, because I can tell you, I've, I've vacationed there. Switzerland's a nice place. <laughs> Singapore's can be lovely in the winter. Um, there, there, are, there are other places that are happy to be havens for the very well-to-do.